The interstellar Orion nuclear rocket, not to be confused with the current Orion crew exploration vehicle being considered for flights to the moon, was designed to use nuclear bombs to propel a spacecraft through interstellar space. Small nuclear bombs, would be released from the back of the vehicle, and explode at a safe distance. The hot expanding gas of the explosion would push against a large plate at the rear of the vehicle to drive it forward. The race to the moon dominated manned space flight during the 1960s, and culminated in Project Apollo which placed 12 humans on the moon. Unbeknownst to the public at that time, several US government agencies sponsored a project that could have conceivably placed 100 people on the moon, and eventually sent crewed expeditions to Mars and the outer planets. These feats could have possibly been accomplished during the same period of time as Apollo, and for approximately the same cost. The project, codenamed Orion, featured an extraordinary propulsion method known as nuclear pulse propulsion. The concept is probably as radical today as it was at the dawn of the space age. Its development appeared to be so promising that it was only by political, and not technical, considerations that it was not used to extend humanity's reach throughout the solar system, and even further, to the stars. Orion was conceived to deliver a propulsion system that could deliver far greater exhaust momentum per unit mass than modern-day solid and, or chemical rockets, and that can operate at significantly larger power densities than current high-performance electric propulsion systems. The idea of using a series of explosive pulses to propel a rocket vehicle can be traced back to Hermann Ganswind, who published his idea in the 1890s, and R.B. Gostkovsky who issued the first scientific study of a concept using dynamite charges in 1900. There were two basic types of nuclear power plants, NPPs, that were researched during Orion's time, the external NPP, and the internal NPP. The external NPP was, historically, the first to be conceived. The pulse takes place at some distance from a pusher plate, behind the spaceship, which intercepts and absorbs the shock of the detonation. With the internal NPP the explosion takes place inside a pressure vessel from which heated propellant is expanded through a conventional nozzle. When this method was conceived, it was projected that use of an enclosed reaction chamber and nozzle would eliminate the energy losses associated with isotropic external expansion, and lead to greater performance. There are two main limitations to the performance of an internal system, 1. Radiation heating, most of the radiation emitted in the form of neutrons and Y rays, aka, gamma rays, is deposited into the chamber wall. Because of this, the vehicle requires cooling. This is the dominant performance limiting factor in the internal NPP. The other limiting factor is the higher mass of the internal vehicles. Studies showed that the minimum mass of an external nuclear propulsion system will always be less than that of an internal nuclear propulsion system for the same payload and mission. Project Orion was born in the midst of one of the most aggressive weaponization of the atom periods in the world. In contrast, famed theoretical physicist Freeman Dyson saw that the potential energy of the atomic bomb could be harnessed for truly peaceful purposes, and he wasn't alone. Stanislav Ulam and Cornelius Everett, actually conducted the first serious investigation of atomic propulsion for space flight in 1944, while they were working on the Manhattan Project. In the 1950s, U.S. President Dwight D. Eisenhower, the Allied commander during World War II, introduced his Atoms for Peace plan, which attempted to redirect atomic power towards peaceful applications that would benefit humanity, rather than threaten to destroy it. While there were always going to be military applications for atomic energy, scientists like Dyson saw that the energy released from atomic fission, wasn't any different from the energy released from chemical processes, at least in a practical sense. The amount of energy might be orders of magnitude larger than the energy produced in chemical combustion, but, after all, energy was energy. What really got the ball rolling for Project Orion, was Sputnik. While our scientists were searching for peaceful applications of this, nuclear, technology, the Soviet Union had successfully launched Sputnik, the first artificial satellite humanity ever put into orbit, to the shock and humiliation of the United States. The space race was on. 
In response to Sputnik, the U.S. government consolidated the American space effort, under the umbrella of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, which worked hand-in-hand -hand with the United States Air Force, and the Advanced Research Projects Agency, ARPA, later renamed the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA. The very first space project that ARPA researched, was a plan by General Atomics, to use nuclear power to put American astronauts into orbit. The idea behind Project Orion was conceptually simple, use the enormous power from atomic bomb blasts to generate, direct, thrust that could lift a spaceship into space. This was the original challenge that General Atomics hoped to overcome. The project decided to develop a concept, proposed in a 1955 paper by Stanislav Ulam and Cornelius Everett. They suggested that bombs could be ejected backward from the rear of the ship, followed by solid propellant discs. The explosions would vaporize these discs, and the resulting plasma would impinge upon a pusher plate. The whole affair would act as thrust. It was calculated that the speed generated from all those atomic blasts, would be able to generate enough propulsive energy to make the craft achieve orbit, two to three times faster than what you could get out of conventional rockets. Once the ship reached the vacuum of space, that speed would be preserved, as momentum, with any further propulsion, adding, to what it had already achieved once it had broken free of Earth's gravity. Unfortunately, there were obvious problems with Project Orion that proved insurmountable. Back in the inspired Cold War days of the 1960s, when no expense was spared to ensure America didn't fall behind the Soviets again, after Sputnik, there were certain things bottomless budgets just couldn't fix, namely, radiation. Dealing with the radioactive fallout from one atomic bomb was a challenge that demanded big risks, and big resources. Dealing with hundreds of them detonating once every second, creating a towering column of atomic fire, dozens of miles high, would make the former look like child's play. There were other concerns, what if the ship blew up on launch? What if an atomic bomb ruptured? What about the radiation exposure to the crew? Some estimates indicated the crew could be exposed to 10 times the minimum dose that was needed to trigger acute radiation syndrome, per detonation. Project Orion's final nail in its coffin. The hammer struck that nail in August 1963 with the signing of the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. Although the tests required for the development of an Orion vehicle were now illegal under international law, it was still possible that an exemption could be granted for programs that were demonstrably peaceful. However, there is no doubt that the treaty greatly diminished, practically vacated, Orion's political support and that avenue was unrealistic. Wanting to put its resources into the Apollo program, NASA made its decision in December 1964 and announced publicly that it would not continue to fund Orion. The Air Force then followed suit, and announced the discontinuation of all Orion funding, thus terminating Project Orion, for good. <laughs>